All right, guys, so Bungie recently gave Destiny 2 one of the most crazy aim mechanic updates that any console game has received so far. The game basically went from one of the worst Zim games to one of the best with just a single update. Not so long ago, the game ran on 30 FPS and the turn speed was super slow, but nowadays you can run the game at a much higher frame rate and the turn speed is also incredibly high now. It's actually so high now that you can turn almost as fast as in Call of Duty games. Now before we get into the config details, I would first like to go over the changes that Bungie introduced. Also a big shout out to Kusswat, whose Destiny gameplay you can see in the background. If you want to see more of his clips, then check out the link to his YouTube channel in the video description. Now as for the changes, Bungie improved the aim mechanic in three big areas. First, you can now raise the sprinting turn speed by quite a bit, so you are no longer required to use a sprinting subconfig. Secondly, they doubled the maximum hip turn speed from 10 to 20. And specifically on Xbox Series X, they even doubled the size of the aim mechanic, which means that you can now even reach a turn speed that rivals the one from Call of Duty or Battlefield. We don't know if that's an accident or if other consoles will also receive the treatment in a future update. The last change allows you to increase the turn speed for the aim down sight sensitivity, which is another huge change and tremendously boosts your mouse performance. Also, since it took quite some time for the new Destiny Zim profile to come out, there's a good chance that some of you got used to how the old config feels under the new update. Now I don't recommend to use the old config for Destiny 2, because you get a lot of mouse acceleration, but if for whatever reason you fell in love with it and you want it back, then just follow the first few minutes of my Apex Legends video. It will show you step by step on how to recover the old Destiny 2 config. But again, I don't really recommend to do that, as the new config is much better. At last I want to mention that I don't really have a lot of free time right now, so I will cover the rest of the video with an artificial voice. I know that some of you don't really like the solution, but otherwise I probably wouldn't have the time to finish this video. So let's start with downloading the new Destiny 2 configuration update. Go into the top right corner of your Zim Manager, and then click on Global Settings. In that menu you can proceed with the Library Download option, which will update your game library to contain the new Destiny configuration. This feature basically updates your whole Zim database. Once the download is done, you can exit this menu and click on the new configuration button in the top right corner. You will now have to create a new Destiny 2 profile. So search for Destiny 2 in the profile list and create a configuration for the console you are playing on. For demonstration purposes, I will pick the PlayStation profile but my tutorial works equally well for all consoles. The reason behind the new configuration is that your already existing Destiny configurations will not be affected by the library update. So they will continue to use the old Smart Translator version. When your Zim has loaded the new profile, you will be asked about the in-game settings. You can close this pop-up and use the in-game settings from the picture that I have showed you earlier. So as a next step, adjust your in-game controller settings so they match the values from this screenshot. After that, you can take care of the polling rate. Head into the global settings of your Zim Manager. Your polling rate for this configuration should be set to 500 Hz. I did a lot of testing in Destiny 2, and with 500 Hz you have by far the best possible mouse movements while keeping the aim assist at a great strength. This will also provide one of the lowest possible delays for your inputs, and works exceptionally well in the 120 frames per second PvP mode. By the way, your mouse can of course stay on a higher polling rate profile. Just make sure that your mouse runs on at least 500 Hz or more. Once you completed your polling rate changes, press the save button in the bottom right and restart your ZM Apex. Otherwise your polling rate changes won't become active. Next I will show you how to set up the HIP and ADS configuration for Destiny 2. For each value and feature I will give you a recommendation on what to use, if you want more, or less aim assist. Also shoutouts to Candy who helped me test all of these settings in custom games. So start by clicking on the edit button in the top left. For the configuration color I have decided to use blue, and my hotkey is the F1 key. That way I can load my Destiny 2 configuration whenever I want to, by pressing the F1 key on my keyboard. 
As a confirmation, my Zim will then show a blue LED light. Now let's swipe one more time to the right to enter the HIP menu. As always, adjust your synchronization settings first. Because Destiny offers a 60 and even 120 Hz mode now, we will go with Sync Off here. Sync Off on 500 Hz provides very responsive mouse movements without introducing any annoying stutter. It also helps to break through the aim assist bubble to switch between different targets. After that, adjust your hip sensitivity. I will use a sensitivity of 150, with a mouse DPI value of 3200. Your DPI value has quite an influence on the quality of your mouse movements. A wrong value can cause aim assist problems, mouse stutter, and delayed mouse movements. If you are not sure what DPI value will work best for your setup, then you can watch my YouTube short on the best mouse DPI value for Zim Apex and Zim 4. Also, if you don't know what sensitivity value will work best for you, then you can watch my ultimate mouse sensitivity tutorial. It will show you step by step on how to find the sensitivity that will provide you with the highest accuracy. Most people play with sensitivities that they cannot handle very well, and as a result, their aim or accuracy is not as good as it could be. So definitely give it a try, if you want to improve your mouse aiming. Now the following four adjustments are optional, and will provide a little bit more aim assist without changing the movement quality of your mouse movements. For the first adjustment set the smoothing value to 3. That will increase the aim assist slowdown on the target a little bit. The second change will have a similar effect. Set the steady aim feature to 0.5 in your Zim Manager. This will increase the aim assist strength while moving your crosshair when being on the target. Since we don't want the aim assist to be too sticky, we will now add some boost as the third setting. A value of 150 will make sure that we can still switch between targets, plus it allows us to easier break into or out of the aim assist bubble. The last optional setting for more aim assist will be a ballistic curve. Click on the curve generator to open the ballistic curve interface. Next you have to click on the arrow on the right side until the box at the bottom shows a value of 34. Alternatively you can also use the slider to move the editing point to that position. Next you now have to edit this value and change it to 28.47. If you did everything correctly then your curve will look like mine now. It's the same curve from my Overwatch and Apex Legends configuration video. The curve will boost the aim assist for middle and fast mouse movements. It will allow you to better flick onto a target because the aim assist will slow you down at the right moment. At last click on the copy button in the bottom left. After that, you can close the curve generator. If you decide to use the curve, then you have to increase your sensitivity by around 10% now. The reason is that the curve will slightly reduce your mouse sensitivity. So adjust your sensitivity again, if necessary. Next we will take care of the SAB feature. Use a value of up to 40 here. 40 offers a great trade-off between great mobility and precise character movements, while also reducing the amount of aim assist inconsistencies when moving around with your character. Now scroll down until you can see the button bindings. Here you can either copy my button layout that you can see right now, or you go with your own one. At the very bottom of your button bindings, you can find the option to switch to the secondary button bindings. Here you can bind every controller action a second time. I'm using it to bind my ultimate ability to scroll up. You can also do that if you want to. Next to that I also bound the reload key to R. This will later become important if you want to use my Sparrow sub configuration. Now swipe one more time to the right to enter the ADS configuration. Just like before, adjust your Zim synchronization first. Once again go with synchronization off, so you get the full benefit from the 500Hz adjustment. After that, adjust your aim down sight sensitivity. My preferred aim down sight sensitivity for Destiny 2 is 120. Next you can adjust the optional settings again which will increase the aim assist. If you don't want to boost the aim assist, then just skip the following three adjustments. First let's add some smoothing again, to increase the aim assist when already being on target. Use a value of 3 here. In my tests, this has proven to work the best. As for the steady aim feature, use a value of 2.5 this time. That way, even sniper rifles get more aim assist. 
The last optional setting for more aim assist will again be the ballistic curve. Open the curve generator and click on the paste button at the bottom. If you copied the curve in a hip menu, then your Zim can recreate the curve for you now. If you didn't copy the curve, then just redo the same steps that you did earlier. Now close the curve generator and untick the inherit box at the very top. If you scroll down to the movement options, you can now find the SAB feature again. Here I recommend to use a slightly higher value than in the hip configuration. A value of 75 has proven to work best in my tests. With that value, you keep a great balance between precise character movements and a good aim assist behavior. Your hip and ADS settings are now complete. Next I will show you how to set up a sub configuration for the Sparrow. This is primarily for players who do not want to pick up their controllers when using a Sparrow. So if you do not want to use your mouse for the Sparrow, then your configuration setup is now complete. Now for the Sparrow sub configuration, I will first switch back into the secondary button bindings of my hip configuration. As you can see, I have bound the reload action to the R key. With that button I will spawn the Sparrow, and also activate the sub configuration. So bind a button of your choice to the reload action now, with which you want to trigger your Sparrow setup. It has to be a button that you haven't bound to any other action yet. Next switch into a new sub configuration and activate it. Bind your Sparrow button as the activation key. For me, that will be the R key. Next you have to tick the toggle box on the right side of the activation key. In the advanced options, you will now have to set a delay value. Set it to 500 milliseconds. After that, bind your jump button as a deactivation key. Next set the sensitivity to 500, and the synchronization to off again. Once both has been done, you can add some boost, to make the Sparrow even more responsive. I will use a value of 3000. At last untick the inherit box at the very top. Scroll down to the button bindings now, and switch into the secondary button bindings. Bind your jump button to the reload key there. When you now spawn a Sparrow with your new activation key, your Zim will directly switch into the correct sub configuration. And when you exit the Sparrow, by either jumping, or pressing your Sparrow sub configuration key again, your Zim will switch back into the normal hip mode. Your Destiny 2 configuration is now complete. You can press the save button in the top left, and exit the configuration mode. As always, you can find the copy and paste code for the whole configuration in the video description. If you want to add some further features to this configuration, then you can do that now. For example my second recoil trick works very well in Destiny, as well as my aim assist booster video. If you want to add those, just follow the instructions from the corresponding videos. The setup for Destiny is 100% identical to the ones shown in these videos. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button or maybe even subscribe to this channel to not miss out on any of the upcoming videos. Also, contrary to popular belief, this channel is not an official Zim channel. I run this channel in my free time to bring you guys the latest Zim news and tricks. So if you want to support what I do, then maybe consider to join the YouTube channel membership. Channel members usually get around 1-4 to four weeks of early access to all new videos. Plus, we also have a nice little Discord to discuss Zim settings and other stuff. But that's about it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching and I will maybe see you in the next one.